<laughs> How are you doing there, Albert? Look at him. He's having the time of his life. <laughs> yep, yep. Doing great. So you're surviving COVID-19 and everything? Yeah, well, oh yeah, that's... That's uh, I got all my shots and uh, all the stuff you got to do, and uh, now I'm trying to survive the marathon. Marathon? <laughs> you doing a marathon? I did it. I did it last week. Yeah. On purpose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a masochist. What? That's awesome. So yeah. you did the full thing. No one had to wheel you the last ten miles or anything. Oh man, I you know I saw people going by on their bikes and stuff, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh can't you just give me a little lift? That last six miles was killer. Man, killer. where were you doing this? What's that? Where did you do this one? New York City. Oh really? Oh yeah, you, you did the big one. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. Right, so what was your time? Oh no, I'm not even gonna tell you. <laughs> it was an hour. It was an hour longer than the last one which was in 2019 and i did it in six hours which was Good. obscene to me I, I used to do it in like three and a half oh hours. whatever mine would take yeah. weeks <laughs> yeah well, it, it takes it took almost seven awesome. hours yeah i read mine in installments you know a little bit now <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 like a half a mile a day <laughs> for two months <laughs> so, so albert you know i mean you are the man. I mean, you're uh, with the Blue Oyster Cult is one of my favorites. I mean, when I was a kid growing up, that was the band for me. And so, and you were the ones that were the creators of Blue Oyster Cult, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was started with uh, my friend Don and uh, uh, myself. We had a b college band, and that that band was uh, it was. When we started, we were like probably the worst band on campus. We were terrible. <laughs> we were awful, you know, and it was funny because Donald and I, we both could play pretty well, but the other guys in the uh, band, had, well, the singer, the singer had been in bands <laughs> all through high school, so he was also good, but the other two guys had never been in a band, and, uh, and we didn't really have our, we didn't know what we were doing, you know, it kind of was awful. It was just awful. You know, we were too loud and, <laughs> you know, just not knowing what we were doing. And so the second year that we did it, we got our act together and we became the best band on campus and we got like ridiculous money. And so he, so Donald and I said, uh, hey, we should, we should, you know, we could probably be professional musicians, you know, if we could, if we could get these guys to sound great get anybody to sound great and <laughs> hey, what was the name of your band back then that was the travesty <laughs> <laughs> the travesty of music <laughs> so now you were in college you did yeah. you quit college what did your parents think about that how'd you break that to your oh parents? my god my dad thought i had lost my mind <laughs> He thought I turned into a drug addict. <laughs> which was kind of true. I, was, I did that early in high school. I'm, I'm like, oh man, so that's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I, actually, it worked for you. So, congratulations. Oh yeah, it worked out. You know, I mean, my parents. You know, eventually, you know, they were very proud, especially when I got my brother Joe in the band. You know, that really, uh, that really. Uh, upped our game quite a bit you know once joe and don started working together that was that was it, it was he actually had jackson brown didn't you at one time oh yeah 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 we had jackson brown who, as our singer there for uh i don't know a couple weeks a couple weeks we got to know him and hang out well yeah. at least he at least he was able to do something after he left you guys <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He was a. He, it kind of worked out for him. You know? Now, when you started, even the horrendous band. I mean, were you straight drums, or did you play all the instruments even back then, or did you fine tune your craft? Uh, yeah. Well, in the you know, I think for many years I didn't play guitar live. I would just you know I would. Uh, play guitar in the practices and we'd all switch instruments and all this other stuff, you know, because, uh, you know, especially in Blue Oyster Cult, you know, because Eric is actually a pretty good drummer and so is Don. So the oh. two of them would, would always jump on the drums and I would grab a guitar or, 
uh, harmonica or whatever it was, you know. Cowbell. Lying, cowbell lying around. <laughs> whatever was lying around, I'd grab it and make some noise with it. So Now, you're, you're around in the music business. You're considered one of the best drummers in rock and roll. Are you the best? Come on, not to me. Not to me. I, I, I mean, I have so many people that I idolize. You know, I mean, and you know, in the early days, I used to love. Uh, um, I used to like uh, Gene Krupa and Sandy Nelson, and then I liked Louis Belson and uh, Joe Morello, and you know a lot of different people. Nowadays, I still have people that I idolize, like Thomas Lang or uh, Larnell Lewis, uh, uh, Taylor Hawkins, the the you know the Pocket Queen. I mean, she's fantastic. I mean, you know, you know. Uh, just say you're the best. Yeah, yeah. So many great drummers. So many great, you know, Bonham. I mean, Bonham was a classic, you know. But I mean, and or even um, Carmine Apice, you know, or Peace, however you want to say it. But uh, Carmine is, you know, he's a great drummer, a great guy, you know. Uh, and his brother Vinny. I mean, they're all, you know, they come from a whole, the Long Island school of drumming, which I was more like Ringo than... Uh, then uh, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, the guy from the Young Rascals. Uh, come on, uh, he made me go blank. We yeah. know who you're talking about, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the guy. He's uh, well. You keep talking about these guys with these, you know, iconic bands and groups. Yeah. The entire music industry has changed. You don't see these rock and roll bands anymore. So. Right now, like, who do you listen to? I mean, if we if we broke into your house like Roy's tried to do several times, he's got a good <laughs> lot. <laughs> and we found, you know, your playlist on your you know, computer or car, or whatever. Who who do you listen to now? Well, uh, you know, I I actually don't listen to a lot of new music. I mean, I'll turn I'll put on an Apple radio station. You know, different ones. You know, like. Uh, I think uh, the one that I'm listening to lately is Solification, which is kind of like a bizarre R&B kind of soul <laughs> thing. You know, it's like all of this stuff that you would just not hear on the radio. You know, it's, a lot of it sounds like demos or, or you know, just, uh, you know, very kind of crude or, or just weird, weird, but funky. Weird but funky. <laughs> You know, sometimes there's some rapping in there. You know, most of the time it's like bizarre. You know, they play Chance the Rapper. You know, I mean, I mean you br <laughs> since you brought that up, we've been hearing a lot of rumors about you. That's true. Yeah, and uh, that you're starting a new career in gangster rap. Is that correct? Nah, nah. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't fit in with that. You know, oh, I mean, on. you know, listen, I, I and a, a street rapper name. I, I played uh, a gig on uh, last Thursday, and uh, one of the songs, you know, everybody's like, wow, that is a great little guitar part you got going. And I'm like, How to Love by Lil Wayne. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> See? You know that song, right? It's fantastic. It's, it's his, his best song, and he's, he, you know, he's singing. So it's well, there's a little bit of rapping, but he's mostly singing. I mean, there are some rappers that are very talented. Now, there are others that are not talented at all and seem to be popular, and I don't quite get it. You know, you know, you're like uh, drummers. There's some people like you, and then there's some with no talent. We, we understand. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So, started, where did you come up with the name Blue Oyster Cult? That was that was completely Sandy Proman's invention, and it the name preceded the band uh, by a few years. You know, he had written a song called Blue Oyster Cult. And when we were, needed a, a name, and, and it, you know, he had written the lyrics to a song, I should say. And he, he probably did have an idea in his head about what the music would be like, but, uh, but um, we didn't really find that out until later. But, but it was a song, you know, originally he would just write lyrics and we would try and write songs to them, you know, and, uh, or actually, let me think about it. Uh, like uh, the song, like I'm on the lamb, but I ain't no sheep. That was a song that uh, I had written and it was called you. 
you know, and it was like this sort of paranoid, <laughs> paranoid uh, uh, thing about, you know, people spying on you, you know, and, and uh, you know, the government, you know, getting involved in your yeah. life and all this. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure that, I mean, I knew at the time it was paranoid, you know, but I, you know, I just liked it because it's it was like, it was real, attitude, you know, they're right behind you. Be careful. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you, uh, what was your big breakout? I mean, what was the big moment when you said, Hey, I'm a rock and roll superstar. Mm. I would say uh, if there was a moment in time, it would be, uh, when we hit the ending, when we were in the recording studio and we hit the ending of Don't Fear the Reaper and I could hear it on the radio, it just in my mind, you know, it was like, it sounded, I had the headphones on and the mix was so good. It was really sounded great. And I start hitting those backbeats on the cymbal and it's like, whoa, this sounds like a hit, you know? So, and that I think that was it. That was it. I knew that I was there. I was I was in in that position that I wanted to be in when I was, you know, 12 years old in the junior high. Now, and, where were you at with the first time you heard it over the over the radio? Uh Oh my god, I can't remember. I I remember the first time I ever heard myself on the radio, which was uh um WLIR on Long Island played uh Last Days of May. And uh, and I was in my bedroom and I heard it and I was like, whoa! <laughs> yeah. And I mean, because, you know, the story, it's a true story, you know, or mostly true. And I mean, I think that the murder, well, it says they're okay the last days of May. Now, you know, Bill Tate was arranging to go to Arizona to get this uh, this delivery of some kind of drug. I think it was pot. It was probably marijuana. So, but he was arranging that at probably around the 31st, you know, the 30th or 31st of May. Wait, 30. yeah, May has, how many days does May have? I don't know. It was the, it was the very <laughs> end of May. He, you know, he, they did, he didn't fly to Arizona until like uh, uh, July or no, June 6th. And the murder was on the 9th. So. You know, but uh, and all over the world, Paris and everything, playing concerts. You know, oh yeah, well, not everywhere. I have never been to South America, and I've never been to Africa. You've been to Arkansas. And I've never been to Australia. So those are the three continents I haven't. You've been to Arkansas, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's a, a, that. Happen. I go there regularly. I've been there. Let's see. I guess I don't know. Maybe half a dozen times in the last ten years. Ah. Uh, now, yeah. what was the one concert that stays in your mind that this was the best concert I've ever played in? I don't know. My memory is not as good as it used to be. I'm awesome in all of them. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I will say uh, 2016, Dublin, Ireland, playing with Blue Oyster Cult, that was, uh, that was a dream come true. It, and the concert was fantastic. You know, the, the, the audience was singing every word to every song they knew everything and and it was like you know there was only about you know there was maybe four or five hundred people that's it but it was loud they were really loud it was like oh my god this is this is incredible you know, my people my people i'm like over half irish you know my mom was irish so uh so that was really cool that was cool i would say you know some of the uh, day on the green concerts with bill graham you know like the one that we played with uh jeff beck that was amazing oh, wow. oh cool that was now, what's happening right now are you touring at all or did covid kind of shut everything down you just yeah you know music? yeah i i uh i blue i was playing with blue coop at the time when the covid struck and uh that was pretty much my full-time thing i had a couple other projects that i was working on uh you know with i was making another solo record that was going to be reimaginos and then uh i was also you know but i at the time i was like well you know i'll work on this when i can and you know but my main thing was blue coop and uh and blue coop was supposed to play a one of these rock cruises 
you know, <laughs> up in Sweden and Finland, you know. And so, and we were going to try and get some dates, you know, maybe in Russia. And, you know, we were trying to do some really crazy stuff. And, uh, and then COVID happened. And so at that point, it was like, well, I'm going to put my work, my energy into this uh, uh, reimaginos, my, my, what was going to be my fourth solo record. And, um, and I did. And uh, that turned out pretty good. I mean, people really, really liked it. You know, it's the first solo record that n not just broke even, but make, made money. Hey, I mean, right. I mean, they sold out like, you know, almost instantly, you know, and, and this, my new record, uh, Imaginos 2, that sold out before it was even out. Oh, wow. You know? <laughs> yeah, just in pre-orders. So now, let me, let me ask them now, when you was doing your concerts, you know, back in the, in the day, uh, did you ever like throw TVs out your, the hotel windows and stuff like that, rip up a hotel room or anything like that? Yeah. Uh, Come on, Albert. Well, it's, uh, I personally did ne never did anything like that. I mean, uh, I just Donald and I, good. Donald and I, you know, Buck Dharma and I, we used to uh, play pranks on uh, cleaning ladies and and like <laughs> make up the make up the uh, TV table like the bed and put the TV on the bed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Switch everything around, you know. Was that the drug haze day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Com uh, completely absurd, you know, little pranks that we would play. Crazy on, uh, outer boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was at a uh, uh, party where, um, I mean, the craziest thing, you know, a couple of the Alice Cooper parties got pretty rowdy and people were throwing <laughs> things out the window. And, uh, and I was at a kiss party once where somebody threw a TV out the window. But uh, I, I personally didn't do it, and and when that happened, I'm like, I think got a show tomorrow. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> now, have you ever had a problem with groupies? That's the key question, there, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't regret anything. Roy. I don't regret anything, but you know, <laughs> I, you know, I I I really was not that bad. But there were times when. Uh, you know, when I first started, I was married, but that marriage uh, quickly unraveled as soon as I, because the person I married, she didn't really have that much faith in the band. And she thought that, you know, I would come to my sense and get a, uh, a regular job and, you know, and all of that stuff. But it's, you know, when the band started taking off, she couldn't deal with it being alone all the time. So, uh, you know, she, uh, she Making wanted herself out. now, Albert. And so then I had, you know, that was a good uh, five, six years where I was not, uh, I was a free person. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Those were the I took advantage of, you know, you know, this, all of this Me Too stuff, you know, it, it kind of freaks me out a little bit because, <laughs> you know, uh, I think I did take advantage of younger, younger people, you know, young, young girls. I mean, not, I mean, if they looked young or seemed young, I had to see a I had to see proof. I mean, I was, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was not. And, and I remember there was a 13 year old, <laughs> this 13 year old wanted to sleep with me. And I was like, you can stay here, but you stay on the couch. And I'm a man, <laughs> and I am not going to touch you. Uh, that is, hey, you know, you got to grow up before I can deal with that kind of stuff. The Besides, I wasn't interested. The plot of rock star it just didn't rock. seem, you know, why be with somebody who doesn't know what they're doing? You know, it was these other groupies that were like professionals. They knew, they knew what they were doing. You didn't have to teach them nothing. Uh, matter of fact, they taught me quite a few. And the name Sweet Sweet Connie comes in the conversation. Oh uh, yeah, that's sad. You know, yeah, I knew her. She was she was great. She was a little little, little messed up. But. Yeah, she was always. She would always call me and say, "Oh, I'm having such a hard time," and I'd say, "Connie, it's hang in there, baby. You know, you're good looking. You're you're cool. You're talented. You know all this other stuff." So now, Albert, yeah. obviously, we're all going to go listen to your new music and all that. But you're mentioning a regular job. You also um, are you still teaching? Didn't you? weren't Hadn't you been teaching I, in New York? I retired in 2018. You know, and the reason being that I just got to this age. I mean, I love the job. 
I think that, you know, my students were like, yeah, yeah, you're some big rock star. What are you doing in this lousy school? <laughs> and I'm like, you see that car parked out front? The blue one, yeah. Yeah, the Porsche. Yeah, that's mine. Okay, so how many teachers here are driving Porsches? <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you got, uh, did you get decorated by President Obama? Well, decorated. No, that's that's a bit of an. I I he he asked me to come. That well, I got an invitation. You know, his name was on it to go to the White House. I thought it was a prank. You know, and uh, and then somebody from uh, I belong to this uh, NAFMI, which stands for National Association of Music Teachers or something like that. I don't know, or Teachers of Music. I don't know. And anyway, so this organization is about music teachers. And so I got involved with them with their charity and stuff like that. And uh, they said that they had uh, they had put my name in to, to go to the White House for the Teacher of the Year Award. And so I went, you know, I mean, I didn't have to go. I didn't get I didn't actually get any award. I just uh, but uh, but I did get a very nice letter from the president afterwards, you know, and thanking me and, you know, and, and saying how it was just amazing that I I uh, I left Louis to call to become a, a teacher, which was not really true. But yeah, you, you didn't know. get an award, man. We thought we were talking to somebody. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I got a letter. I got a letter that he, a personal letter to me uh, that he signed, you know, so that was cool. You know, and I did meet him. I, I I tried to shake his hand, but there was too many people in front of me. He reached but, but out. Security but, tackled you first. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was in a crowd of about four hundred people, so you know. But I was kind of towards the front. I was actually at the front, and then these young girls came, and I said, "Oh, you want to see the president? Go ahead." Go ahead. <laughs> I let them in. You know, young teachers. You know, it's like these guys are going to remember this forever. You know. <laughs> You, know, so you got so, the holidays coming up. Are you staying home? Are you doing any kind of holiday music? Any kind of uh, thing well, for the holidays? I I don't know exactly what's going to happen on Thanksgiving, but I do know that uh, on the day after Thanksgiving, my family, my uh, my my uh, five brothers and uh, one sister, okay. are uh, all getting together via zoom and we're going to have a jam session oh, wow. How yeah. cool. and not just not just the the seven of us but also all all of our cousins and you know their their kids nephews nieces nephews uh, grandkids so it's going to be there'll be about 30 to 35 people on the zoom and oh, and cool. and how we do it is you can sing along or play along, but you have to be muted so as it doesn't, you know. It's not. <laughs> so we don't hear you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Only one person, the one person, the leader of that that song. Oh, the, you stink. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we have a list, you know. We, we, you know, my brother Joe, he organizes, you know, who's going to sing what, you know, when. Like, and, nope, not, uh, you, not you. Not you. I mean. We all in my family. We all play uh, an instrument, and we all sing, and uh, and so we always used to do that at Thanksgiving. But now we're getting you know all the our cousins and their their families involved. So that's really pretty cool. You know, it's almost like a family your, reunion. I watched one of your videos, and and you said in your video that you were a bully in the band. Is that true? Well, I didn't really see myself as being a bully, but they they <laughs> saw it that way. You know, I think that that's 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 what I that's what I figured out later because I thought, that, you know, that, why would they ever want me to leave? You know, I I helped everybody with their songs. You know, and uh, you know, and I mean. There was some resentment that I got my name on so many songs when, you know, somebody else would, for instance, OD on Life. Okay. I don't even remember what I did on it. My name is on it. I do remember that it was Eric Bloom's idea. You know, he had this, Sandy had a lyric. He gave it to me. I said, I don't know. This is, 
this is weird. You know, <laughs> So Eric said, oh, I got an idea. So it was Eric's idea. And somehow I did something where I got my, I think myself and maybe Buck is on it too. I don't remember, but, you know, and I remember at the time saying, listen, you know, you guys help me with my songs. I help you with your songs. You know, we're all in this together. Why don't we just do it like the, the doors, you know, and split everything equally. And they didn't want to do it. You know, I had <laughs> to lose with that, you know, but they didn't want to split everything equally, you know, so it's they took it all. <laughs> so I took what I, you know, what they wanted to give me. I don't know. It was weird. It was weird. I didn't want. I didn't want a good idea to get shut out because I somebody had too many good ideas, you know. So that was that was my reason for wanting to do that because you know we it was always a democracy. So we would we would uh, uh, you know we would always have to agree on everything it was always consensus you know so well i'll tell you albert you're or, or mostly consensus so that but i mean and that's you know i i think that you know i i said that i said that uh they saw me as being too forceful or too you know too uh ener energetic i don't know if that's the right word but <laughs> Yeah. yeah 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 no 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 try this out it's gonna work <laughs> believe me just tr just try it if it wow. doesn't work we won't you know that's what the kind of thing i would do I you know you, it wasn't your traditional it, it was it an intellectual bu bully yeah. <laughs> intellectual. You work because your music has standed the test of time because when you have a skit on saturday night live Absolutely. where only cowbells would cure my fever that's something albert so how did that <laughs> How did that make you feel when you first saw that skit on SNL? I, you know, there was two, the first, my very first uh, thought was, oh my God, you know, they're, they're paying attention to Blue Oyster Cult on Saturday Night Live because every time we had a record, we would, you know, pitch Lauren Michaels, you know, hey, you know, we should be on your show, you know, and it's like, <laughs> nah, you, you guys aren't <laughs> hip enough. You're not hip enough for my show. You know, or something. I don't know what what his uh, rationalization for not. We're gonna wait for someone that gets an actual award <laughs> from Obama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so th that they paid attention to us. That was cool. And then uh, and then the next thing when I saw what the skit was, I was like, cowbell. How did I even hear it? It's like, I you know when they were mixing it, I'm like. Uh, Shelly, Shelly Yakis was the, the mixer. And I said, Shelly, turn it down, turn it down. And Shelly's like, if I turn it down anymore, you're not going to hear it at all. And, and Buck is like, it's good like that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I mean, that's, I mean, it's a fantastic yeah. skit. I think they did, you know, y'all pretty good um, representation of it. I, th I thought it was great. Well, you know, the idea of a cowbell on it is, patently ridiculous because it is kind of a serious song dealing with you know death and and uh you know uh the ultimate you know i mean it's when nobody gets out of here alive you know we know that but you there know, is it's an the, actual cowbell in the song right Are you oh yeah yeah it? yeah it, it is right? it is there and i played it you know uh, reluctantly <laughs> i was like uh, david lucas was the producer who uh not uh not the other one uh bruce dickinson <laughs> uh david lucas was a producer who wanted we had three producers for that record sandy perlman murray krugman and david lucas and david lucas wanted uh you know he said uh, you can play the triangle and the bridge but you have to play the cowbell in the verses i'm like what <laughs> cowbell you sure did he you say know? he had a fever but the thing is that a cowbell just by nature, by its very nature, and probably as its cultural uh, connotations, is a happy kind of instrument. It's always <laughs> happy, you know. When you, I mean, there was so many people playing cowbells, you know, banging on the cowbell at the marathon yesterday. It was like it was fantastic. It was a tribute, you know. To and I'm like. <laughs> The cowbell is a happy sound, so so you have this serious subject with like this little happy thing going through it. It was uh, it's kind of brilliant. 
kind of brilliant. I didn't think about it at the time, but and or or, or it could be the click, the the just the tempo of the clock, you know. Oh, like time. Albert. Oh, yeah, Albert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Albert, congratulations on the career. Congratulations on almost getting an award from Obama. <laughs> uh, if someone wants to go get your music, listen to the things that's happening right now, what's the best way for them to find out what you're up to? Well, uh, I have a record company now uh, called Deco Entertainment, D-E-K-O entertainment and they they have all kinds of stuff they have you know bundles with t-shirts and and mm -hmm. picks and sticks and cowbells and all kinds cowbells. of stuff posters you know a lot of sign stuff you know when when uh, the record for, you know before the record came out they sent me like 500 records to sign which i did and then they sent me another i think uh, 300 posters and uh, I signed like 280. I saved 20 for myself. <laughs> that's for your Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Everybody's going to get a poster this year. I signed say, Merry uh, Christmas. Since Christmas is coming yeah. up, Albert. Happy Hanukkah. <laughs> you know? What we need from you yeah. is for you to send us an autographed cowbell for Christmas, Albert. <laughs> okay. Can you do that, Albert? Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> we got yeah. a recording. We, yeah, we yeah. got it here. Yeah, Listen, I'll do people. that. You got to send me your address, though. I don't know where. Where are you? You're in Arkansas, I guess. We're in Arkansas. Right? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You know where Sweet Sweet Connie was from? Right here. Yeah, yeah. But so, yeah, we'll send you rock. our address and just wait for that cowbell. <laughs> okay. Albert, man, <laughs> seriously, thanks for the time. That was a lot You've of. You've been fun. outstanding, outstanding, Albert. You're amazing. Thank you. So, You're going to get an award from us, Albert. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not letting any young little girl bump you out of the way. <laughs> well, if you do, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so be safe. Have a great holiday. Stay safe on COVID-19. And um, yeah. hopefully we talk to you in the near future. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. That'll Thanks, Albert. You be safe, yeah. my friend. Take care, Thank Mr. Man. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh, do you want to send me your address? We will. Okay. Okay. So you got my email? I well, you your email. Okay, I'll good. I'll send it through uh, Hadley. Okay. Yeah. Roy That's fine. Address. Yeah, he, yeah. He looks in your window every night at 1030. <laughs> 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 we'll talk to you soon, Albert. All right. Appreciate it. Bye -bye. Okay. Have a good holiday, guys. Bye-bye.